Hey, so we're doing some live research, although if you're watching this as a recording, it won't be live. It'll be a recording. Um, so what we're doing within this room is um, we're creating stories based on um, a number of topics and themes. The theme today is looking at um, Australia's detention system in relation to refugees and where that crosses over with current uh, hotel quarantine restrictions, um, which it does, and it sort of does via, for me, it does via TripAdvisor. Um, so <laughs> there's a bit of a messy pool of, of research, and I need to update it a bit, so that's what I want to do now. Um, we're in arena. What is that saying? Oh yeah, you can see this. So that's good. Sharing whereby to whereby. I don't know what that means. It's annoying. Can we get rid of that? <laughs> um, we can get rid of that though. That's a bit neater. Um, so this initial research was done quite some time ago, I think. Yeah, three months ago. Um, for those unfamiliar with the project, um, I was in hotel quarantine in Melbourne, in the city for a little while. Um, there is information about this on many rooms, many dot hyphen, many hyphen rooms dot info. Um, you can find out a bit more. I'm a bit tired. I'm a bit rambly, so apologies for that. So, wonder where I should start. I want to explain some of this stuff here because I initially, before I travelled back to Australia, I was really desperate to find out more about how um, people were doing in hotel quarantine, what the situation was. I really want to know if you got a choice of hotels. I think this is from the Muji website. This is bad because I should really say what these things are. Um, I'm just going to quickly edit this because I think this is the Muji Hotel. But it kind of looked a lot like... Um, I need to probably find original. Um, it looked a lot like the photos that the news were, uh, the Australian news media were um, replaying like this of people um, looking out of their hotel rooms. Although, <laughs> Kel Surprise, this is not hotel quarantine or, or recently returned travellers with Australian passports. This is refugees from Mar Mariners. Where were these guys from? So looking into the hotel quarantine regime, there is a bunch of legislation. A lot of it comes from uh, an act that was passed in 2008, um, which I th I'm pretty sure part of that act was um, this provision for hotels as places of detention um, and the outlines around that and how that all happened. Um, I, like many others, probably weren't aware of this provision and the fact that it was being enacted. Um, the guys you see in this story here, sorry, I've got WhatsApp open. <laughs> should probably shut it. Um, what is that? I don't know what that is. Um, where was I? So these guys have been, a, a lot of them have been in hotels in Melbourne awaiting. So they've, they've come from offshore detention for medical assistance and they've had to sort of be put in these hotels like prisoners and wait. And a lot of them are waiting for this medical attention, which is taking months and months and months and months. So, you know, a few, you know, returning travelers got to experience detention within hotels in the city for two weeks. But a lot of these guys have been 
inside these hotels for, uh, you know, see Hannah, there's a reporter called, I'm just like not being as factual as I should be, but that's because there is a reporter who's doing amazing work. I think this is one of her reports. I hope it's still there. Hannah Ryan. That's right. So Hannah Ryan, is, it was a reporter for BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed closed down its Australian um, news media office, which, you know, Australian news media is pretty dire and pretty biased as it is. Then to have like, yeah, this, and I mean, I wasn't aware of BuzzFeed news until I started looking into these stories, but it was just one more reasonably independent news source that we lost in Australia. Um, and we didn't need to lose anymore. <laughs> the The good news is, is this, this, this particular reporter seems to, she seems to have been picked up by the Guardian, the Australian office of the Guardian. So she's continuing to report on things like this. So she found what Hannah Ryan did was she located a hotel in Brisbane near the city centre that was being used to house these refugees who had come over to Australia for medical attention. And she reached out to them and started to contact them um, to ask them what, what was going on, like, and just find out these things that no one was talking, well, no one I could find was openly talking about. Um, yeah, see, somewhere along the, I'm pretty sure there's some guys that have been there for like a year or more. I'm just wondering if this is the article where she talks about that. So she was corresponding with um, a lot of the, it seems to be mostly men, I don't know why this is, um, but she was corresponding with the men in the in the hotel rooms. Um, so that's you know one of the men sent her an image of the hotel room, I think. Or is this her checking in? There is one. This is the image I love. This is the reporter, and one of the guys inside the hotel has taken a photo of her talking to them. Um, there she is again. So according to the rules of these hotel detentions, um, you pretty much can't leave the room, you know. Um, it's a, like there's a balcony maybe. Um, this is where you live for months and months and months. It's oh, it's really strange. Today I, I've been participating in a workshop about um, the film Safe and about immunity, and I was looking up, on a whim I looked up Bubble Boy because I remember there was that wacky um, film. Let's actually look at it. This is a segue, but it's a good segue, I think. Um, so this is the film Bug Boy, which was one of Jake Gyllenhaal's first films he ever did. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm guessing it's a comedy because, <laughs> I mean, you'd hope it was. It definitely doesn't look like any sort of fake docudrama. The heck is that? Is that the same thing? Um... <laughs> I'm guessing this is based on the real life um, Bubble Boy, which is uh, what is his, David Vetter, I think his name is. This is a bit of a heartbreaking tale, actually. I should warn you, if you're in isolation, this could be a bit triggering. <laughs> it should be triggering. It's a, it's a sad story. Um, yeah, so this guy had this thing called SCID, which is an autoimmune deficiency. Um, and it, tra these two parents, it travels, like they were told that the, a lot of their children would have this. Um, if they, you know, it wasn't, not every child they had would have it, but a lot would have possibly had this sort of sensitivity to 
chemicals and to just anything in the outside world. Um, so I don't know how NASA got involved, but um, the doctors at a local hospital in Texas were aware that this couple that had the potential for their children to have this disease. So when this little guy was born, they put all this uh, energy into creating this sort of bubble enclosure for him. So I think he was actually kind of born inside one where, with his mum and they kind of took mum out and left baby in there <laughs> like a humidity crib, but enormous. That's a very early picture. Um, so this poor guy, he was in here until I think he was 10 or 11. Um, and this is just before an operation, a bone marrow transplant that he was, um, his sister donated some bone marrow. Um, and there was a, a hope that this would, um, boost his immune system. <sighs> I just, I know, I feel like I know a bit about this because um, I have an autoimmune condition that comes and goes. Um, when it comes, it's it's um, it's quite dramatic. Um, and this, it's happened twice. And the second time was shortly after hotel detention. So not, you know, a few months ago or whatever. Um, I've recovered now. It's fine. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I had to have a bone marrow test and it was intense. <laughs> I had all the tests, every test you could think of. Um, that was the one that stuck in my mind the most cause it was just, it was not pleasant. <laughs> um, so yeah, but you know, it was a risk that the bone marrow wouldn't be compatible and that there might be contamination whenever and, the doctors and this guy's parents, and I'm hoping the child as well, all sort of said, look, we'll take this risk. Uh, and it didn't work, and he died shortly after the operation. Um, so he spent his short life in this sort of inflatable bubble world. <laughs> At one point, NASA um, got involved because they, they had a facility not far from where these people lived and they made him a suit so he could go outside. Um, but from what I've read, like he didn't really travel outside of in the suit that often. Um, yeah. The thing that got me was that to keep this inflated, there was all these really noisy fans constantly running. So it's never away from this sort of constant humming noise of the fans keeping this inflatable structure um, from deflating because <laughs> you won't want that to happen either. So that's the segue I went on today. There are many, many styles of isolation and many different durations. Um, uh, yeah, this, this is a, you know, that's a really strange duration, but I wanted to update this because, um, actually I should see the name of the hotel because of this work that this, I'm, I'm going to assume it's because of the work this reporter has been doing that there have been a few months after these, these reports, she did a few articles on this um, particular uh, hotel, um, talking to the guys inside. Um, Angry point. Now, how do I find, I guess, protest? I want to see pictures. Yeah, see, like, before, just, oh, is there a picture of the exterior? That's a we will go back. These window shades with the metal straps over them, they're so crazy. Like, it's like the hotel's been, um, this is the one that gets a lot of press in Australia. 
in, I mean, in um, the state where I live, Metro Bell Hotel. We'll try and find some references to that. So this is it before. I want to see like a really clear exterior shot. This is it's just like made to be made to imprison visitors with these weird windows. Um Huh. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna um say that because of the work this um journalists did attention was drawn to the hotel and then people have been camping out and um, trying to support these guys inside and in return they've been sort of having protests inside and um, there's a shot this is great I think this is outside oh no yeah this is outside so it's gone from this hidden passive quiet place to being a central focus point of um, attention for protesters, um, which I don't think would have happened unless this reporter had gone out there and really tried to find out what was going on. So I want to green left. <laughs> What's green left? I mean, I'm on a socialist website. Okay. We can add this to, to the research panel. Where are we? Now, I've called it Proximity, which is not the name of the story, but I'm loath to call the research pool, um, what was the name for the story I was going to use? The Trip Advisor, because it's, um, it's more than just about this Trip Advisor business. Pro proximity was a really good um, name for the pool when I set it up because I was aware I was going to hotel detention and... I kind of imagined like what if, you know, the recent visitors were on one floor and then on the other floor were these refugees waiting for medical attention. Um, I should grab a couple more links to this. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying, I'm being, I'm being biased in my selections um, because Australian news media tends to be incredibly biased itself. Um, which doesn't mean I should be biased as well, but, um, I don't want anything that sort of colors the protests in, um, any sort of right wing propaganda agenda style. Let's see, Lakes Mail. You have to be so careful with news media in Australia because even the small newspapers are possibly, you know, Murdoch associated or Murdoch owned or, have that sort of tendency, in which case you just know it's going to be a um, propaganda piece for, you know, right-wing political parties. Um, I wonder, this doesn't seem so bad. Peace in fact, free, free the refugees, no hate, no fear, no refugees welcome here. Demonstration was supposed to be limited to two hours after police successfully. This isn't, ah, oh, this language just always gets me. Like, it's never like saying, I mean, a, a lot of the papers will just come out and say these rotten protesters, get rid of them. What are they doing there? You know, they're obstructing traffic. It's always, oh, see here, disruption to traffic. It's the main concern of any Australian <laughs> news media organizations, how much anything disrupts traffic. Um, protesters gathered. So this is, this is even more insidious because it's just like, it's not openly saying that they shouldn't be there or that this is a bad idea. It's just sort of saying that they were disruptive um, and that they, <laughs> what was the one that I saw was really good after this? They sat peacefully in the park. They marched and mastered. Blah, blah, blah. They are supposed to be limited. Oh, no, they went over the two hours. Oh, no, they're terrible people, you know. But chanted for hours. Oh, disrupting. Like, oh, the people trying to have a nice, quiet life. Oh, no. 
Yeah, interesting. This gets added. Yes. You know, the, the research, where is it? Should be unbiased. It really should. Which means having a mixture of um, opinions and voices. I don't know if something about including like some of these right wing ideas. I just, I just can't go there. What was this one? Accommodation news. I love, love when you find a source and it's like a trade newsletter or a piece of like ancient legislation or something like that. These are the really juicy types of literature and texts for me. <laughs> They're like the things that look the driest and the most inaccessible. I just am like, ah, oh, this is great. I love this stuff. Um, hotels are no luxury places to design people seeking asylum in Australia. Huh. So I'm not sure if they're arguing a case on behalf of hotels. Kept in hotels. Da, da, da. Ah, this is, this is super interesting. See this alternative places of detention. This is legislated within this um, Health and Wellbeing Act. So this is what um, what I didn't find out, which I really want to find out. And I, it was, I couldn't find information about it. I probably have to go actually to the hotels and ask them. But how do you have to apply to be an APOD, an alternative place of de detention? Like, is it voluntary or is it imposed upon the hotels? Because this was the big question I had was how, what hotel, why are certain hotels used for this? And some, and it's like, why isn't it every hotel? Like what makes a hotel exempt? Like, or is it that hotels sign up um, and get paid by the government or something to, to become one of these alternative places of detention? This term fascinated me. <laughs> I was like, there must be like, you know, endless documents telling hotels how, how to behave if they're an A-pod and how to do this and how to do that. But looking at the way it's been run, though, you feel like maybe there isn't enough um, sort of instructions or anything like that around how these places should be run. Um. No luxury for guests. This is quite a good article, actually. These detaining prisons are typically held two or more in a room. This was the other thing too, like, like people returning from Australia. We don't. If we we're single, we got a single room. If we were a couple, we, you know, we're a couple in a room. The guys coming over from offshore detention tend to be stacked up in rooms, like whether they like it or not, um, which again is like this weird imbalance. Like it's, 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 it's kind of uh, to think that Australia now has gradients of detention and that anybody can be detained for any reason is not a, it's not a great situation, is it? <laughs> Independent reviews of the detention situation in Australia are relatively minimal and infrequent. Yeah. Um, there is a inquiry into hotel quarantine going on in Melbourne at the moment, um, but it's mostly to find out how there have been breaches in um, COVID uh, restrictions or... Um, yeah, this is a good one. But that's one I've already saved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what have I kept? Let's have a look what's in here. There's something else I want to add before I forget. And I will I will go through these as well. Um, I think these will be interesting. Um, so if we go to... I think it's liquid architecture. It's not going to be space, is it? Or maybe. Liquid architecture is an organization that puts on 
events and I'm going to call them art events, but uh, it's a very broad definition um, of it in terms of events that they put on, which is fantastic. I think they do a really good job. Um, they have expanded upon, this is it, what the reporter Hannah Ryan was doing in terms of like, you know, contacting people inside detention and um, seeing how they're doing. So this is a project where you can hear recordings by guys um, inside the Mantra Hotel in Melbourne. So the Mantra Hotel um, where, which is an A-pod, that's the other thing, like, can't find like how many apods there are, how many people being detained. It's just like, you know, a reporter will like Hannah Ryan will find a place and then suddenly we know about it. Um, I'm not sure how people found out about the mantra in Preston, but Preston's like this suburb, fa a fair way out from the city center, but because, um, House prices were just like going skyrocketing in Melbourne before COVID. Um, a lot of people looking for cheap housing were moving out to these previously less fashionable suburbs. Um, Preston is one of these suburbs where uh, a lot of the actual um, art studios and um, well-established art institutions, they were pushed out of the city centre and ended up in Preston because there was lots of... Um, uh, a sort of massive warehouse spaces on main roads. So you could have like the extra, the space for, to um, have artists actually have studios, um, you know, as well as exhibition spaces and visibility on a main road. So they gave up a lot of vis visibility by being in the city center where um, you don't just get residents, but you get visitors to like these weird outer suburbs where it's mostly residents, not many sort of tourists or um, people you, you know, visiting necessarily. Um, but they get like more space and they get like massive street frontages and stuff like that. Um, so the, the Mantra Hotel is in this suburb. It's, is it a cliche to see where there's activists, where there's artists, there's activists? I don't know. Maybe it's something. So you used to be able to say that, you know, cheap housing would equal sort of more artists and more grassroots sort of activism and things like that. I don't know if you can say that anymore. Um, yeah, so... Liquid Architecture have these events. Um, they sort of group things together under these titles. Um, you can see the titles are even sort of inconsistent. Um, and yeah, it means they can incorporate lots of a really wide variety of types of projects and project makers. Um, so this hope, ah, there's a good screen grab i need to add this actually before i forget add this to proximity save to one channel yay um so you can see here you subscribe by texting hello when i tried it it didn't work but i don't know if that's because i'm stupid and <laughs> didn't know how to how to send a text i don't know what was happening it didn't work i tried it a couple of times it's like phew, it's a bit rubbish but um, I have since heard an interview with one of the organizers of this work um, and they played recordings um, from the project, which you can hear if you text. Um, it's, yeah, I would recommend, oh, actually, this is probably a better link. Oh, this is perfect, okay. Proximity, there we go. How are you today? I wonder if they give you a sample. All the prattling I've done, and this pretty much tells you what's going on. How are you today? 
Uh, so since 2013, nearly 2,000 men have been indefinitely detained on Manus Island, which is offshore detention uh, by the Australian government after arriving in this country seeking asylum. Um, commissioned for this project is a collaboration between some of these men um, and uh, some artists in Melbourne. Uh, I thought they were specifically talking to the guys that had been sent to Melbourne and were in hotel quarantine, but maybe it's a bit broader than that. Um, each day for, for 14 weeks, the duration of the years of the... Ah, oh, so this happened a couple of years ago. It must have been pre-recorded. One of the men on Manus made a sound recording and sent it on shore for swift upload to the gallery. Hmm. Maybe I've got this slightly wrong. I oh, know I haven't. If it is for you, receive text message. And see the force be transferred. Now they're held in hotels or detention centres in Port Moresby, Melbourne or Brisbane. Sorry. This is the, the nebulous way <laughs> Australian arts organisations have to work. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is an arts organisation, Manus Recording Project Collective, and Liquid Architecture are working with them on a particular project, which means they get more visibility than they would um, if they're on their own. What we just looked at here must be an old project that previously ran. This is what's running now. Where are you today? Yeah, and these are, t these are messages um, with 10-minute audio recordings from inside hotels which are being used as A-pods or detention centres. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this, the, this reminds me of the work Hannah Ryan was doing as a journalist, contacting the men in Brisbane in that hotel. Um, but this is presented as a, in an art context. Um, that, I mean, there's an interesting study just there in what happens, you know, in terms of the communication, the way this... Similar things being enacted, but one through the lens of journalism and one through the lens of um, uh, art collective. Yeah, so I thought that, so that those two sort of things are super interesting. And I really wanted to add them to the research pool, which I have done. Um, while we're here together, I'm just going to sift through it a bit more. Um, I can hear a fan going. Is that my computer? Are you having trouble recording and doing everything at once, computer? Uh, this, this I will go through in a sec. This, ah, uh, this was interesting. So one of the things I was thinking is... Australians are weirdly com... What? Huh, it's gone. Easy hosting management. What is this? Clean and keys. Oh, we need to see what was there before. We need to go back. Um... This is a very problematic browser I'm using because it's connected to this cryptocurrency mogul. Um, it's good in that it blocks a lot of advertising, but it does weird things like, do you want to set up crypto wallets and tries to get you to use more and more cryptocurrency. Um, having said that, again, one of the good things I like is they now have a thing where if it can't find a page, it goes to look for it on the Internet Archive. So um, I can recommend it for that. It is a bit slow though. Is it finding anything? Please find it. This is what I wanted. 
I should probably do like a PDF for this so that it could, I guess it's an internet archive. It's reasonably permanent. So one of the other one, one of the main things that puzzles me is how complacent Australians are when it comes to facing authority and the fact that it was very hard to get anyone to say anything bad about the about pretty much putting all these new arrivals into detention for a couple of weeks, let alone like the masses of detention going on with these poor guys coming over from offshore detention to be then detained within hotels in Australia in these A-pods. Um, and I was sort of thinking maybe, <laughs> you know, there's maybe people want to be in like, like Australian citizens want to be isolated. They want to be um, encapsulated and not be able to go out and do things like maybe this is actually a bonus for some people. Um, and I found this website that was advertising quarantine homes for self-isolating in. Um, particularly for, I think this was when you didn't, it wasn't mandatory to go into a hotel. Like you just had to like go somewhere for two weeks, um, and hang out on your own. Um, so these guys were offering like, it's not a lot here. I feel like there was more before. Yeah. See, they're offering like, um, self-isolating properties. All properties come with Wi-Fi, smart TV, streaming your own Netflix, Disney Channel, etc. Got your telly, you'll be alright. Get meals delivered straight from your door. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and what is this about? Honestly. Um No judging. Oh, what was this? I think this was imagining like a hotel. Oh yeah, the design. So the post pandemic hotel where, you know, everything's self isolating and you can't touch surfaces and stuff like that. That was interesting. Who wrote this? I should probably make a note of that. Tom Ravenscroft. Um, people want assurance of clean space. I mean, it's not surprising. I think to see an article like this, um, there's probably going to be a billion of them. Um, you know, the hotels for detention, you can go stay in a hotel that's in an old prison. Like that's a thing. There's one in, it's interesting. There's one in Eindhoven and then there's this one in Australia, I think. Sorry, the one the Eindhoven Hotel is actually an old church. That's not a good comparison at all. <laughs> it's late. I'm tired. I haven't added it to the research pool. So, yeah, this is. And actually, what I haven't included is Pentridge. One of the large, like, I'm pretty sure it was one of the largest prison complexes in Melbourne. It was enormous and it was all made. So if a city has a motif, Melbourne's motif is bluestone. Um, there was this craze. I'm not going to give you a date because um, I, I don't want to be too inaccurate. Um, but there was this thing where there were these fences made of bluestone going up all over Melbourne. Part, it was probably part of a colonization effort, you know, marking the land. Um, so different suburbs had these different buildings using these rough hewn bluestone, uh, uh, bricks or chunks of rock. <laughs> um, that's not a bad image actually. So event, oh my goodness. So eventually Pentridge, Pentridge was emptied out. It was just like this like rickety old cartoon version of a prison. Um, did we have a look? I remember, ah, oh, that's what it was. I downloaded the plans. Um, we're now trying to get planning permission to turn it into like a housing estate. So they had all these interior plans and you could see like images of the original prison and it was, it was pretty, pretty dank. Um, but developers were just pushing on anyway. And actually 
this is the main entrance, but there were many different sort of sections and complexes and buildings behind here. It was sort of this almost warren sort of space bordered by these massive bluestone walls. Um, and that's a lot of that's been broken up into housing and then there's been a lot of like new housing built behind the bluestone facade. Some of the buildings are protected for heritage reasons. So, but that hasn't stopped developers from coming up. So this is, <laughs> this is the old interior as it was when the prison closed down. And this is like a developer's version of like a, you know, modern office environment within the same space. Oh, like, yeah, someone's put them side by side. <laughs> that, like there's a whole massive thesis probably on this um, prison aesthetic within Australian culture and how weirdly comfortable <laughs> white Australia is with still being imprisoned or still having this idea of being locked up or imprisoned, which is why I think like, you know, the very authoritative stance uh, around, you know, people call what's happening in Melbourne at the moment, lockdown and that sort of stuff, like it's being enacted without a lot of protest or, there was a news report recently where <laughs> it was just today where they're saying like, ah, oh, the suicide rate has stayed the same through this entire lockdown thing in, um, in Melbourne. And it's like, it almost pat themselves on the back, um, for having such a complacent, um, community. Yeah. The, like so many examples of, this overlap between places of detention and places of living or places of recreation or, you know, it's almost like um, if you can have fun being confined, then that's like a ideal. <laughs> so bizarre. You can just like this, this search is just flicking between like prison, you know, um, tourist center, prison, um, housing estate. This is one of the buildings that's sort of inset behind the bluestone walls. So this is obviously like all new housing that's been built. Okay. Could be mistaken for a prison as well, I guess. And then there's the original buildings there. That's a good example, actually, like the old watchtower, new housing. That's kind of what it looks like mostly behind the, the fence now after its redevelopment. There's just a few of these heritage buildings which they need to <laughs> what is that <laughs> is that like a sunday market inside the prison building it would have to be wouldn't it oh, i feel like i kind of want to add this to the proximity um research pool but i don't know if it's going too far away from it, it it's a bit ropey sort of going from prison to refugee detainees, I guess. I don't know. It's also like a really strong analogy. We'll just leave it at that for now. Pentridge, unless I find like a Pentridge, you know, estate website or something like that. Um, I've been waffling on for a long time. I'm going to stop recording soon. What was this? Oh, this is more of Hannah Ryan's um, just excellent reporting on where she reached out to the guys inside um, these A-pods or one particular A-pod. Um, I just, th I so recommend her reporting on this. It's really, really rich and good. Um, just a shame Australia doesn't have more outlets for amazing journalism, really. That actually breaks my heart a bit. Um, wow, Australian reading rights condition. Um, the Chinese officials feel that they would die for good uh, uh, I'm glossing over all this stuff just because I have read it and become familiar with it. Oh, quarantine traps. Oh, this. <laughs> I think this is where the news was for a while. 
Is this actually, is the audio actually recording? I'm just assuming that I've got audio. This would be terrible if there's no audio. Um, I should check that. Just in case the audio is fine. This is the one last thing I wanted to share. So, oh, this. So, trying to find out which hotels are being used as APODs, especially for people quarantined coming back from overseas. Vogue, Australian Vogue, or Vogue Living, did this fluff piece on the hotels that were being used um, as places of detention. And it was conjecture. Like, I got to the end and I was like, oh, they're just guessing. They know some of them. They don't know all of them. And all the images are of these sort of stock photos that they must have grabbed from hotel websites or something. Sort of showing how... They look a bit like real estate websites. That is probably a lot grimmer than it looks. <sighs> yeah. The guys and the refugees will not be held up in these sort of places. Um, where was I? Yeah, but because of this, it meant, or not because of this, but the people had started writing um, TripAdvisor reviews, criticizing the, um, whoops, sort of using TripAdvisor reviews as a point of protest, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I started doing that myself weirdly when I was ill while I was ill in hospital I was writing TripAdvisor reviews about my experience um, and also um, mentioning the refugees um, being detained in other hotels and I got into this mini sort of I got into this conversation with the guardians of TripAdvisor um, about they didn't want, they wanted to take my review down, which is ridiculous because you can then just post a, the same review on innumerable other travel sites and that, that'll come up in search results anyway alongside the TripAdvisor reviews. So they were trying to censor people talking about hotel quarantine and were pretty successful about it. <laughs> That's what I think the story I'm going to write this time will focus on, but I want to try and put some more of this information about detainees in there as well. <sighs> yeah. So I'm going to end our little sojourn around the research pool for this story. And I'm going to get writing. Um, but what I really want to do is check whether any of this audio actually worked. <laughs> so I'm going to stop sharing the screen and see if my recording worked. Thanks.